all stories fail. We're all crucified. I get crucified a couple of times a week. I crucified. Done by people I don't even know, or barely. And all stories begin again. And the new chapters just literally waiting for me to take my quill and dip it in the ink and begin. And we're all resurrected. We're all resurrected because it's one love, it's one heart. And she never stops beating. And the heart, the heart never closes. She just opens deeper and deeper and deeper. David, read us the code. Give us a code, man. Read us the code. Here we go. David's got a code coming at us. Here we go. Code coming at you here. It's a very simple code, but uh, it's a it's in many ways a, a emergent piece of the Dharma here. This week's evolutionary love code. All stories fail. Everyone is crucified. All stories begin again. Everyone is resurrected. Back to you, Dr. Mark. Give it to us again, David. Give it to us again. That One more beautiful. time. Give it, like, yeah, give it, okay. Blow us out, man. Take Blowing us everyone out. All right. All stories fail. Everyone is crucified. All stories begin again. Everyone is resurrected. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to the code. Here's our code, right? So David got all stories fail. So I just want to just get this, okay? I want to just spend a couple minutes on this because it's such a big deal and it's so beautiful and it's so true. So all stories fail, right? Does everyone get that? I mean, who gets that in our lives? All stories fail, right? How many people, how many of us have failed? Okay, let's just check in. How many of us have failed? Okay, I've failed, right? Like how many of us have failed, right? Right, just like, just feel into that, right? Right? How many of us have failed? We fail at so much. Right? We fail at so many more things than we succeed in so often. And we often fail right, at, at, at the things that we thought and, and are sure are the major plot lines of our life. Right? I mean, just, just feel into this for a second. Go back, if you can, you're 15 years old. And see if you, we, I, together, we can access, friends, the plot line of our life, where we thought we would be, with who, and what it would look like, and what it would feel like, and, and what our relationship would be like, and how we would be experiencing ourselves, and would we have children or not have children? Would we, would we want to have right this kind of life and this kind of vocation or not that kind of vocation? Where would we want to live? Who, what community would we want to be associated or not? Associated? I mean, all of it. And then all of a sudden, we find ourselves at a certain point in our lives and we're like, wow, we failed. We failed. Right? And, and often I wake up in the morning, I say, oh my God, my, my life is such a failure on so many levels. So much of what I intended to do, I didn't do. Right? So many of the directions that I intended to pursue, I was not able to pursue, right? So many of the paths that I wanted to walk, I was unable to walk. So many of the gifts that I wanted to give, I was unable to give. So many of the transformations that I wanted to affect in my own interior using particular sets of technologies and tools I was unable to use those sets of technologies and tools and was unable to enact those transformations in the way that I, I would have thought that I wanted to, right? And as we think our plot line, our life has a plot line, right? The story is going in a particular way. And we say, this is what the story looks like when it, when it realizes it succeeds. And then we realize, wow. I failed at this and I failed at that. And then I failed at this and I failed at that and I failed at that. All stories fail, right? We always lose the thread of the story. 
it's deep. Everyone is crucified. And if you think you haven't been crucified, you're lying to yourself. Everyone gets crucified, sometimes publicly, sometimes in a private betrayal, sometimes by those closest to us, sometimes by reality itself that drives the nails in and doesn't allow us to give our gift, right? But we're all crucified. There's no one who's not crucified. And we lose ourselves the thread and the outline of our story. Right? That's Kafka's great novel, The Trial, where Kay can't track the outline of the story, where Thesis has slayed the great beast, but, but, but he needs Ariadne to find the thread to lead him out of the labyrinth because he, he can't find the plot line, right? So we've, we've lost the plot line of our own stories, right? It's worse than failing. I'm not even sure what the plot line is. How did we get here? What are we doing? And then we gradually begin to realize that there's a larger story, right? That there's a larger eros, that there's a larger vision, there's a larger direction. And that vision and that direction is weaving everything intimately. Even sometimes we're able to see perfectly. And the path we're on looks so different than we thought it should, but yet something important is happening. There's a deeper current, there's a deeper direction, there's, there's a deeper plot line. And that plot line runs beyond the boundary of one lifetime. It runs beyond the border of the chapters of my story that are played out in this, as Aristotle called it, the sublunar sphere. There's a larger continuity of consciousness. There's a larger integrity. There's a larger coherence and Elena, you and I talked about some of the details of this a few weeks ago in an exchange. I won't go into them now, but just at the core, as we reestablish then at the core, right? I know that life needs to be coherent. I know that life needs to be fair. Every child in every culture in the world knows life needs to be fair. There needs to be some sort of fairness in life. Right? When it's not fair, it's a violation. There needs to be some sort of completion of the story, some sort of justice. But actually, it's not wrong to say that an enormous swath of human lives, the majority, possibly, probably, the majority of human lives live in a fundamental unfairness that's never resolved in one lifetime. The overwhelming majority of human lives, right, live in a fundamental sense of a crucifixion, nails driven in that are never extracted. In this lifetime. So, so we know that reality is good. We know that reality is just. We know that there's a plot line because we know justice is real. So what does that tell us? I tell well, justice is real. Fairness is real. Reality is just, but there's not justice and fairness or the completion of a story within one lifetime. That's Easter. What that tells me is that my sense of reality is too small. The reality is not just my separate self and a particular drama, right? In a particular set of movements in one narrow lifetime. No, no, there's a wider story. There's a wider canvas upon which I'm painting, right? The imprint of my soul. There's a wider continuity of consciousness. There's a deeper, more wondrous. That's what, that's what the Hindus mean when they talk about these cycles, of karma, cycle after cycle after cycle of karma. And the Buddhists who kind of pretend to believe only in deep awareness and consciousness, right? They don't believe that either. They sneak in reincarnation behind the scenes and say, ah, yeah, yeah, no, there's no personal self. None of that's true. Ah, but, but you reincarnate and there's some dimension of personhood that reincarnates. Huh, isn't that interesting? Right, there's a larger story. So after crucifixion, there's always resurrection, right? That's, that's the nature of the story. We're all crucified. 
right? All stories fail, but all stories begin again. New chapters are written and there's always resurrection. There's never not. Winter's always followed by spring, right? Hope is a memory of the future, right? And those strains in Buddhism that talk about kind of, we enter this place with no hope. No, no, no. Hope is the vision. Hope is the possibility, right? Hope is the possibility of possibility. And hope springs again and again and again, not because we're naive, not because we're Pollyannish, not because we're lost in a new age fantasy, but because the actual structure and nature of reality is the continuity of the story. It is the realization that reality is a story. It's not just a fact, it's a story. And the story has a plot line and the plot line is only seen with the eye of value, which is the eye of Eros, the eye of Eros value, where I begin to see and unfold, oh, this is my story. I thought that was my story. This is my story. I thought I was supposed to do it that way. I'm supposed to do it this way. And my friends, we suffer intensely. I just want to kind of, with permission, friends, we suffer intensely. We suffer intensely. Do you get that? And I just want to just say it just kind of directly. My friends, we suffer intensely, all of us. And to be alive is to suffer. Buddha wasn't completely wrong when he said life is suffering. But life is not only suffering, life's also ecstatic joy. Life's also unbearable beauty. Life's also a weave of eros that's dazzling and a seduction of intimacy that allures us, right? As we touch heaven again and again and again. And life is hell. It's filled with pain and disappointment and betrayal and contraction right, and collapse, right, and don't underestimate people's ability to disappoint you, they can, right, and, and betrayal is always right around the corner, but so is unimaginable loyalty, right, so is unimaginable integrity, so are bonds of friendship and eros and love that, that are the very raison d'etre, right, that make all of manifestation worthy and worthwhile. Life's a crazy paradox, right? That's one of the principles of homo amor. Homo amor embraces paradox. Homo amor is not afraid to have his heart broken, right? We're, we're not afraid to be heartbroken, but we're heartbroken and then our heart breaks open, right? So that's Easter and it's a big deal. So I just wanna, and we'll close, I'll turn to, to Chris, but I just wanna be, can, can we just be together in this, right? And, and I just wanna, if I can with permission, Right, all of us together around the world, we've all suffered. We've all suffered so much. Right. I mean, I just share with you last image. I often wake up in the morning, right, overwhelmed by an intense sense of suffering. And it takes me sometimes a half hour, 45 minutes, to actually battle my way through the suffering. And sometimes it's my suffering, it's sometimes suffering of people that I know. Sometimes it's suffering in reality itself, but just to battle my way through the thickness of the suffering until I can see the glimmer of a light, a fragrance of possibility. And I can breathe it in and it slowly, slowly, slowly expands my lungs and I can taste the first drop of joy and, and follow those droplets right into, into the day. Right? Suffering is intense. I just want to get that together. Suffering's intense. And so is joy. It's why we say, my friends, it's why we say we live in a world of outrageous pain. Right? And we can't look away. Right? We have to be willing to let our hearts be broken. But then we know, that's what Bob Marley sang. It's our Easter song. It's one heart. It's one love. My heart is broken. That's true, but there's nothing more whole than a broken heart. And that's what Cohen means when he says it's a holy and a broken hallelujah. Right? It's like, wow. Wow. Well, so it's so just good to be together. Right? The crazy, simple, unimaginable joy of being together here on Easter.
and to be able to look at each other and say, all stories fail. We're all crucified. I get crucified a couple of times a week. I'm crucified. Done by people I don't even know, or barely. And all stories begin again. And the new chapters just literally waiting for me to take my quill and dip it in the ink and begin. And we're all resurrected. We're all resurrected because it's one love, it's one heart. And she never stops beating. And the heart, the heart never closes. She just opens deeper and deeper and deeper. Cha. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy resurrection. What a crazy, crazy delight to be with you.